news. My name is Mike B, aka Phony. Today's date is May 27th, 2022. The time is it's like afternoon somewhere. Thank you so much for joining me. Hell no, we're not going to talk about Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. I don't give a fuck. We're not going to talk about that shit. But speaking of mental health, we should probably a quick update on mine. Wasn't really planned, but I figured I'd squeeze it in there because it's a good transition. I was going to talk about it eventually anyway. So, uh, real quick, about a year ago or so, I started taking uh, uh, SSRIs, which is a mood enhancer, right? Uh, because I was experiencing like anxiety attacks, couldn't do anything. Everything, everything. I was like, I was like in in Rogue Legacy two. There's like the there's like the anxiety attack thing where it says making popcorn is nightmare fuel, right? That's like one of the traits, and I could totally relate to that because everything was like just fucking me up, okay? And so I ended up going and seeing, getting help and everything, uh, and they put me on some medicine, and things have been wildly great almost a little bit too great the medicine it was very very potent like i could feel the difference between like now and like say a year and a half ago before i took it uh and <clears throat> while i do enjoy all the aspects that that uh, all the positive aspects there are some negative aspects that i wasn't really a fan of like you eat because you're no longer worried about getting fat you're just like oh yeah well i don't really give a shit about anything anymore because i'm happy as fuck i'm just gonna keep on eating so you end up just fucking eating all the time <laughs> so you end up getting weight <laughs> uh there was um there was the issue that was raised it was like well what happened to your libido it's like well libido is basically gone it's not really gone gone but it's like kind of a chore now now it's like uh before it was like well it's masturbate a clock like all the time and now it's like well i guess i can masturbate before i go to bed but uh, i'm also kind of tired eh, i'll do it later and then that happens forever so <laughs> so there's there's definitely like some ups and downs to it so recently uh actually starting yesterday as a matter of fact we've started to uh actually lower my dosage a little bit so i'm going from 20 milligrams of this stuff to 15 milligrams of this stuff so i have to like cut the thing right that comes with age also nah you'll see you'll see once i'm off these meds i'm be like on a cover of minx uh i thought that I was just getting old <laughs> There are meds for that. <laughs> you want know, take meds and then they do this, but take these other meds and then they'll correct that. But then you gotta take these other meds because of all the different side effects. See, I'm not that person. I can't do that. I'm so I'm yeah. Uh also meds for fertility. Oh, I don't have to worry about that. I don't gotta worry about that, man. Uh we're not having no kids. We're done. We're done. We got one really good one. Put it all put all my work into the one. I can't. Back's blown out. Can't do none of that stuff. Need meds for your meds. Yeah. Yeah, Techland's more than enough right now. So, <clears throat> so I'm stepping down my meds a little bit. Um, I don't know what's gonna happen, right? I don't know if it's gonna, I'm gonna fall back on it. Uh, I don't know what's gonna happen. Like if I'm gonna fall back and like have issues or whatever. Uh, I will tell you that because, you know, I have been so open about this, I'll be more than happy to share some of that stuff with you. Uh, if, especially if like I feel like maybe if something happens, like maybe like I'm getting off the medicine, I do it too fast right because it's serious like hard to get off this thing um then you know, I might have some issues and i might just communicate to you guys like listen like my brain's really fucked up right now i won't be able to do anything but i don't really anticipate that happening um yeah i know i know you guys will be here for me and i, I let me tell you i appreciate the hell out of that i really do i really do appreciate that so thank you thank you but i just want to let you guys know you know for those of you guys who were curious about one getting involved in that kind of stuff you know all that self-help shit uh <laughs> you know a year ago when i started if you wanted an update that's your update <clears throat> it worked. It really, truly worked. It helped me. I don't sure if it helped everybody, um, but it helped me. And now I'm trying to slowly work my way off it, like very slowly. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it's, it's, it's true. <laughs> I want to go in so much more detail because it's really kind of funny the way the drugs work. It impacts like all, everything else. But, you know, we got to do news. So uh, anyways, that's your that's your special mental health update. All right. <clears throat> You need ad deals for these talks? For, for who? From Big Pharma? Hell yeah. Let me hook, hook me up. Hook me up. Um. <laughs> Anyways, back to the news, news, news. So, 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 so. Um, I don't know if I ordered this in the right order, but we can go definitely start here. So Blizzard's back in the news again because they illegally threatened staff. This is by a game developer. They said that uh, according to the NLRB, which is the National Labor Something Board, uh, they have determined that uh, Blizzard has indeed overstepped 
and they have illegally threatened staff. Not even necessarily related to anything else that the NLRB is doing or the DFEH is doing uh, in terms of like suits against Blizzard. So this is um, basically a whole separate uh, thing, I guess. Um, <clears throat> it says here, it says Activision uh, and Activision Blizzard uh, allegedly uh, or apparently, not allegedly, apparently also, quote, told employees they cannot communicate with or discuss ongoing investigations of wages, hours, and working conditions, maintained an overly broad social media policy, and forced a social media policy against employees who have engaged in protected concerted activity, threatened or disciplined employees on account of protected concerted activity, engaged in surveillance of employees, engaged in protected concerted activity, and engaged in interrogation of employees about protected concerted activity. All of this could have been one person, and that's all it takes. It could be one, it could, well, maybe like two people. One person who was the infringer, and the other person who is like a supervisor, somebody who really is maybe not that smart. <laughs> not, doesn't have that much foresight, right? Not really thinking about the future, what this could imply, uh, and maybe coming down on someone's like, hey, I saw you posted something on your Twitter account. You probably shouldn't do that. You probably shouldn't do that. And that's it. That's all it takes. So just add another one. And, uh, and yeah, <laughs> couldn't just ride the good wave of goodwill for Overwatch 2. I love the comments. The comments are like, oh, shit, Overwatch 3 coming soon. <laughs> A question, are Blizzard perpetually fucked until Microsoft get them? Well, yeah. I mean, like, Microsoft's doing their best to get them uh, as, you know, probably as soon as possible because they have to wait for, you know, review boards or whatever to uh, FEC, I think, right? Or somebody's going to go through it and do some reviews of the acquisition because of the dollar amounts and, uh, and you know, monopolization of our industry and everything. I mean, look what happened whenever you monopolize an industry like uh, uh, baby formula, right? I mean, you know, sometimes you, it's not really a good thing. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, our, our Blizzard uh, it, it fucked and sell uh, Microsoft deal. I think right now they're just floundering and they're just going to continue to get battered here and there because people are people are getting brave now they're just like you know i'm not gonna deal with your bullshit anymore blizzard you don't own me and that's kind of the sentiment that goes that's been going around for the past uh you know basically since we reopened uh and everybody started going back to work they start to realize it's like well one how was I able to do all this work from home this whole time and not have to come to work and we were very productive and everything was fine and two like work conditions suck because i spent life at home for the past you know year and a half doing the same work but having a much better like mental state having a much better work environment and then you go to work and you're met with harassment you're met with all kinds of stuff and it's like you know what people are just like man fuck that like i don't have to deal with that and so people are getting brave and they're stepping up and they're reporting these things uh why would anything suddenly change after the acquisition even bobby is staying on yeah you know I, even with bobby like i'm not sure if he's gonna stay on stay on because that kind of stuff is like that could be decided at the last minute it, right the more of these things that pile on bobby might just be like man fuck this also like why does the bobby just fuck off anyways the dude's got so much money like just you're you're actually good for the rest of your life like just get away from us <laughs> like just be done <laughs> but yeah we'll see if uh if he ends up really moving over and i'm sure he might it's like a 50 50 to me can we shoot him out of the galley the galley wicks can just fire him right across the map um uh, but 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 you could have more money, and you see that's the problem, man. That's the problem. I wish we just cap people off. Like once you make a certain amount of money, then you're done. You're ejected from the workforce like forcibly. Um, no, that's so communism. I don't know. I don't know what you distribute that to. Because he's a goddamn troglodyte and just won't fucking go away. That's right. Ah, <sighs> that's why he's staying in, dude. Cause he got all that money, to get more money. That's right. It's true. Well, uh. uh Microsoft is going to have a few more issues uh, on their hands uh, when uh, when they make the acquisition because uh, Raven QA, we talked about this uh, probably about a month and a half, two months ago. Actually, just a refresh, fresher memory here. It was this video that we played uh, where we had uh, a bunch of QA uh, uh, from the Raven studio in uh, Wisconsin, Wyoming. Shit, I don't remember where. But uh, they they voted... I think it was like 19 to three or something to unionize against uh, Wisconsin. Thank you. Yeah, they voted to unionize. So this is like a huge thing. This is like a huge thing. This is the first, this is the first uh, union in a major uh, publisher um, uh, in games. So, which is, which almost seems crazy because almost every industry has a union somewhere. Like every big industry 
in some pocket somewhere there's like a union that's formed or something um recently even even uh starbucks has i think a new york uh location and a couple other locations that are working on it but i think new york actually did get it done uh yeah your state nice <laughs> let's go wisconsin yeah uh, you see that uh, editing unionization all over? The the company won't recognize it. The company won't recognize it. Well, I don't know where the where that uh, where they're at. Where are they located? But anyways, let's not get, uh, get too far off. But please let me know. Um, is that Starbucks near you? Awesome, awesome. Oh, you got the link. Whoa, look at this! The man on the ground, front lines, hooking me up. Seven Seas Entertainment Gomanga has informed us that it will not voluntarily voluntarily recognize United Workers of Seven Seas. Let's see, 30, 30 of the 41 eligible staff have already independently voted to form a free, our union free of uh, of management interference and publicly supported UW7S, but our course is set and attempts to divide us ahead of the pending uh, election uh, will not shut our sails. These guys really, really are on top of their, like, sailing puns. Uh, I see, where is 17 is located? 17 is located in LA. Oh, interesting. Wow, they're just going to say that they're not going to recognize the union? I feel like this is something that is going to get cracked down on. Um, yeah. I mean, it's easy, easy, easy for a um, for a company like Blizzard to try to do their best to harass and uh, muscle and union bust as best they can. Uh, but once a union has been formed, that's like a slippery slope for a corporation, right? That's like a slippery slope. Once one gets going, then it emboldens others, and then you get more and more and more unionization. Also, only have 40 employees uh, with how much they put out is kind of ridiculous. Oh, I'm not familiar with, with their workload or whatever, but you'd be surprised what 40 people can do, though. <laughs> is it a union or a crew? Ah! Yar! That's a good question. <laughs> good one, titties. Uh, so, yeah, they voted on Monday. They voted on Monday. They are now... Um, uh, a an official union, but there's still more. There's still more. They still have to uh, 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 hold on a second. They have to negotiate with Blizzard um, to work out what with Activision Blizzard to work out like what the terms of this is going to be. So there's still more for them to do. Uh, this is huge kudos for them. It's a landmark thing for games industry. We've talked about game, uh, uh, gamers union and uh, union for gamers and, and all these other like gaming entities. And um, <clears throat> we've been talking about it for a long time because we have seen that when you work in games, it's never a permanent thing. You're, you're there until they no longer feel like you're necessary. Meanwhile, <clears throat> meanwhile, they end up uh, preaching about uh, about all of these huge uh, uh, earnings and everything they end up getting. And so this this article right here actually details this pretty nicely. It talks about, it says, Ravens Union come, came from business as usual. And what they mean by that is is what I'm, what I'm describing. It's like, for years, we recognize that, wow, Blizzard laid off 800 people while also on the quarterly earnings call talk about how they're making more money than ever. That doesn't really add up. That's really strange that they would do that. That's really fucked up. Um, and so it's stuff like that that just kept on happening and kept on happening. And that's what fueled it. It wasn't like a single incident that was like, whoa, we should unionize. It was like, no, they just keep on doing this thing almost as if it's expected. And we did we do expect it whenever like I had a, I had a uh, every time I'd have somebody who'd work for a games company, I would tell them, I would joke with them. It's like, oh, cool. So you're set for the next two years. <laughs> you're set for the next two years. But uh, what do you got planned after that? But again, employment is more like contract gig work without the benefits and creating your own schedule and setting your own fees. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bobby had a uh, stock value targets. He had to reach for his bonus. Uh Oh, did he make it? Um, so it says, uh, yeah, they still need to negotiate a contract with Activision Blizzard and the publisher has every reason to make that process as arduous and minimally rewarding as possible. Thank you, Jordan. We can only have one Jordan here. Um, so now Phil Spencer has been asked about this because they're, they're going to be the ones that inherit this, uh, this problem studio, which I'm sure they're probably uh, referring to it as internally. Um, and it says uh, he says that they are going to respect the uh, the union. I'm not sure if he has much of a choice. Phil Spencer is one of the um, one of the biggest good guys on uh, in terms of like being a face of a company. 
for him to make an uh, make an uh, assertion that they wouldn't recognize a union would just be a huge black mark across his reputation and people would immediately turn on him. He's at the <laughs> objection hearsay. <laughs> he's he's at he's at the popularity level where it's like there's enough people to know who he is that if he if he does anything like really messed up or even a little messed up it's going to flip and he's going to be on the dark side of this shit. Is the higher fire mentality just the way to keep wages low and prevent pay increases past a certain level? Yeah, part of it. That's part of it. Uh, that's part of it for sure. Uh, if you keep people uh, from reaching their like vested term, they don't have to give them stock options. If you if you keep them uh, from staying employed too long, you don't have to give them benefits. You don't have to increase their earn their hours. There's a lot of things you don't have to do when you just keep people on for just long enough for them to figure shit out. And then you kick them out. So yeah, it's definitely. I mean, that's that's a huge problem. It's a huge problem. What what what? Yeah, why invest in talent when you can abuse passion? Damn, Nipper, that's a good one. Negotiations can take years and then die as years later because all those who originally signed to the union have left or been fired. And that's probably what they're going to try to do. Um, <clears throat> Boeing took years before Mechanics Union could uh, get a signed contract. Uh-huh. Yeah, so I, I, I reckon they're probably going to drag this out as long as they can. So it says right here, uh, once a deal closes, we would absolutely support an employee's organization that is in, that's in place. Uh, we think it's the right of the employees and something that we can be a part of, uh, we can be a part of a relationship between a company and people who work at the company. You see, what, what a union is great for is, you know, it also keeps you like up to date on like your, the current value of your work. Um, one of the things I did when I was working in retail is I would work somewhere for a year and then I would intentionally hop and I would go to like another another you know business, uh, like another retail outlet that was in the same field. Uh, and then I would get a, a good salary boost because I would leave one place with experience and then I would go somewhere else. And now I'm an experienced person and they would hire me on at a higher position or at a higher rate. And so in a matter of like four years, three years or so, I, I worked for, I, I kept going back and forth to Comp USA because that was the way I was able to basically climb up the ladder. I left, went to Circus City, came back, assistant sales manager. I left, um, uh, went to uh, uh, Best Buy, and then I came back and I was tech manager. So that was how you do it. You just keep on bouncing around and that was how you're you're doing it. and that that still applies today you know so you you work somewhere you get the experience and then you leave you go somewhere else and you make you know anywhere from 10 to 50 percent of an earnings increase so the same thing happens in tech industry you just keep popping around to get significant pay increases exactly exactly so uh, some people are able to manipulate the uh the hiring market almost in the same way uh that the uh employers are manipulating they're working their hearts their, their asses off to keep uh wages low um <clears throat> but meanwhile there are people that are slipping through the cracks that are able to work the system a little bit and i know people that are doing that um and not necessarily intentionally but like i know people who are successful and making fucking stupid money um over the course of just several years it didn't take long for them to reach that point because they worked at so many places so that's the way to do it or you get a stream, you get a stream for like 10 years and make the same amount every single year, right? You could just do that. That's always cool. <laughs> but Microsoft, Microsoft does indeed still have their own problems. If people think that they're going to be absorbed by Microsoft and that's going to be like a, a whole new work environment, we're getting out of this frat boy culture and all this stuff. Well, a Microsoft exec allegedly watched VR porn in the office and behaved inappropriately towards women employees, as in groping. Uh, this is uh, somebody who is actually a face of of the um, uh, of their VR segment. This is, uh, what's his name? Al Alex Kipman. Alex Kipman. Yeah, he's revealing HoloLens 2 here. And so, <clears throat> this, I mean, this, uh, this didn't come too long. Like, not even that long ago did the Microsoft uh, CEO uh, say that they were cracking down on frat boy culture and all that stuff. And then it was alleged here by uh, several female employees that um, that this guy's watching. What was it? It was it was VR porn and it was described as like lesbian. Oh, I got I got a second. Lesbian. It was a les lesbian. How do you spell lesbian? <laughs> Pillow. 
There we go. Here we go. Uh, somebody else described it as a lesbian pillow fight. Anyways, it says in one instance, Kipman uh, is alleged to have watched a lewd VR video in in the office in front of employees, according to a person who was present. The video featured women in skimpy clothing frolicking on on a bed and engaging in an overtly sexualized pillow fight. <laughs> an employee who was present, speaking with Insider later, described the scene as VR porn. <laughs> It was lewd. It was lewd. It was safe for work. Come on. It's fine. I'm just, no. <laughs> so not a point just ticked up, but it was VR though. It was VR. I wonder what video it was. Anybody have an idea? Oh no. Which video was it? Uh, <laughs> do it at home, people. I don't understand why people watch fucking porn at work. Man, I know. I never got caught, but man, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Who are they holding hands? Disgusting! <laughs> then he realized the VR cast into the monitor. Yeah, that's that's probably what happened, huh? You sit there and just like, whoa, and on the monitor. Um, although the way it's written, it's almost as if it was intentional, but... Anyways, it says one such golden boy. I love how they write this up. It says CEO Satya Nadella has promised to end the company's tolerance for talented jerks. But dozens of current and former employees told insiders executive misconduct runs rampant and the company uh, retains a nearly unlimited tolerance for bad behavior by its top rainmakers and developers. Rainmakers. I thought that was a pretty cool a uh, uh, term to use for, I guess, somebody who makes it rain. Uh, <laughs> one such golden boy uh, was a prominent executive to oversee. Da -da -da -da, and it says he says he repeatedly gotten away with inappropriate behavior towards women employees, including unwanted touching. Now, I'm really surprised when I hear now nowadays that uh, uh, inappropriate touching still happens because it's like that is such a line to cross. Um, I mean, it was a line. It's always been bad. It's always been bad, but. Now, when it's like it's so easy for somebody to just like just throw down on Twitter or something like that, and all of a sudden, let's say everything you worked for is gone because you're a dumbass, uh, it's I feel like it's fucking stupid. <laughs> like, I feel like it's a really fucking stupid thing to do. Um, I uh, hope it wasn't in a red state. Presume life begins at the play button. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> now don't you ejaculate now oh no 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 can't can't do that here that's illegal herschel walker will take care of that oh man too many fucking pol political puns and jokes <laughs> doing stupid is a common human trait true but wait microsoft is not the only one microsoft is not the only one that's dealing with this um one of one of their biggest competitors sony is also on the line right now. Uh, and it's, all this stuff has happened recently. Um, <laughs> you know, news has been pretty crowded with other more important stuff. But uh, I don't want this stuff to fall under the radar because, you know, like these motherfuckers, like, come on, man. Come on. Uh, there are companies that are going to put in wank pods, though. So anyway, Sony is being sued for sexism again. So it says Sony tolerates and cultivates a work environment that discriminates against female employees, including female employees and those who identify as female. So just to be clear, this is Sony and a Sony office in California or headquarters in California. This isn't Sony in Japan or in Europe or anything. This is Sony, California. This is here. Uh, it says <clears throat> a male engineer told they interviewed one of the uh, one of the young ladies who is filing the suit here. It says a male engineer. Uh, Nintendo had a. a, a had a suit. I, I'm not sure. I, th I think I'm not sure we covered it, but they had a suit that hasn't really gone anywhere yet because they denied the neither claims hasn't really gone anywhere about uh, an improper workplace. But I don't think it was sexual in nature. Anyway, so I don't, I'm not sure though. Uh, they see a male engineer uh, uh, told her they that that I I shouldn't oh, in an email in an email too by the way uh, that I shouldn't wear a skirt to work anymore because it was distracting to him. No, none of you guys would ever do that, right? Like you guys, like you guys, you you know that's not that's not you. Like, it's bad. It's bad to to say that. But it's like bad plus dumb, like really dumb to email it. <laughs> like, you might as well just CCHR on that bitch. I just let him BCCHR. Here you go. Just thought you'd like to know that I'm about to sexually harass this employee here. Ha ha. Hmm. My salt and pepper beer is pretty distracting, but distracting to you. <gasps> Stop sexualizing my beard. 
I don't ask for leggings. You say it's, uh, it's bad to say that, but schools tell that to teenage girls every day. You know, I, I don't, I don't know how to, what the rules are now, but that's the way it was when I was in two. Yeah, you couldn't wear, you can't wear a shirt, skirts that are too short because they were. I mean, I was a teenager, so I was like, yeah, short skirts are awesome. <laughs> but I rec, I recognize it now. You know, I recognize it now. You know, I'm just, dude, like I get it. Yeah. You, Probably shouldn't do that, fucking kids. <laughs> uh, let's see, I would ask for like anyway. So, um, if I was an ace, I wouldn't fuck myself that hard. What the hell? Uh, so, I was checking my watch. Oh my god, uh, it's terrible. So, um, so yeah, Sony is also also taking a beating right now. Uh, and this was, this was, yeah, so this is following, this is the best part you're talking about, right? It says, following a dismissal of a lawsuit in April alleging sexism at PlayStation. So, yeah, this is a whole new lawsuit. They just finished with the old one. This is like the sequel, right? Um, my, my school is pretty much as long as you don't, can't see Nip and Cooch, you were fine. Hmm. Couldn't wear short skirts unless you were on the cheer squad. That shit was barely legal at my high school. Jesus Christ. All right, guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so Sony is uh, Sony's in a, in, a, in a bad way right now, along with Microsoft, along with, um, well, I mean, we already know that Blizzard is in the is in shitter right now. So, really, there is no safe place to work um, in games. Like uh, the, basically, that's what they're telling us. There is no, there's no place to work in games. We're not going to get sexually harassed, uh, and it, 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 I think that it's pretty safe to say there's no place, safe place to work anywhere um, where you're not going to get sexually harassed in in some regard. So, um, but you know, it's an evolving culture, so you know, it might work itself out eventually. I don't know but i hope so uh all of sony legal cases have should be revealed to public until they enable cross-platform play that's what we should that's 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 you know that's completely reasonable that's completely and totally reasonable i feel like they should do that <laughs> hold them hostage cross-platform let's go um what is this? Is it bad that I hope that all this shit is being done by the business bros coming into gaming and not for the ride or die nerds from day one well unfortunately it's already been shown that um that that is not the case uh with blizzard right we know that that's something that's been brewing on in their on their side for uh for a long time um so this next this next story i have here uh i don't have a uh a wsj a prescription or prescription i don't i don't have that i don't have a wsj uh subscription so i'm gonna read you off what i what i gleaned from other sites uh in order to get some of this information here so this is this is seeming like this is probably going to be one of the biggest rug pulls in crypto uh history um now crypto is a big deal to us because nfts are associated with them and some and some no 12 foot uh, 12 foot doesn't work yeah 12 foot io doesn't work for this one it, it just says is it still there yes and you submit it yeah i, I know i tried that too i was like dang um but it talks about you know it talks about luna it talks about all these other things and that now it's talking about this crypto might have an insider trading problem and in this article they're talking specifically about coinbase i mean they're talking about other things surrounding it or surrounding it but they're also talking about coinbase now coinbase is a wallet um that allows you to well it's, i think it's more than a wallet it's a wallet and like an exchange right or something um and so uh like i have a coinbase account and, and i have like some ethereum i have some doge i have some other like bitcoin cash i think bitcoin other things i have like a number of different like you know uh, uh, cryptocurrencies all of it's worth nothing <laughs> um so but it's but it's still like you know it, it, it's it's a, it's it's an industry that i'm a part of it's an industry that i think a lot of you guys are too especially if you guys want to buy those nft skins man you got to get yourself a coinbase account but don't worry about it now because listen uh, it says that uh, according to the wall street journal four top coinbase officials have collectively netted over 1.2 billion dollars by selling company shares so so what they're saying is that when Coinbase went uh, uh, went public, that they were able to essentially, or they're essentially pumping and dumping. Um, the stock for Coinbase has reduced by a significant margin, significant. Um, meanwhile, they're just like selling off everything. And so it says what they found was 46 wallets uh, Found that were found that purchased a combined of 17.3 million dollars worth of tokens that were listed shortly after on Coinbase. So they're tracking some of these things. Um, let me take a look at this here. 
uh which one is this one yeah here it is so yes it's the 46 wallets uh and then over here with uh cory clipton who is uh another uh, uh the blue cheese a blue check so uh, and it says attorneys for cryptocurrency trading platform coinbase uh filed a motion this month to dismiss a class action lawsuit arguing that 79 of the tokens listed on the firm's platform are unregistered securities so right now there's like a two-pronged attack going on with them so they're being they're being looked at because it's like well hold on a second these guys insider trading here but also, but also does it count as insider trading if it's not a uh like a well as a registered security if it's not like a, a finance firm and so <clears throat> there's all these questions now because we don't really know how to classify cryptocurrency when it comes to regulations and everything because cryptocurrency typically doesn't have any regulations and so are they performing what is um typically anywhere else considered to be insider trading or is that just the way the industry works which you know it's wrought with fraud we know that crypto and nfts everything's wrought with fraud so it's very possible that that's that's the case here uh and it says a group of coinbase users are demanding reimbursement for trading fees and market losses and seeking to prevent the assets from continuing to trade on any platform it says among the assets targeted in the lawsuit are four of the 10 largest cryptos with market value xrp cardano solana and dogecoin um, and so it says, yes, it's crypto is not technically a security. So what they're trying to assume, what they're trying to figure out here is just outside of enforcement actions, the Securities and Exchange Commission hasn't indicated which cryptocurrencies it considers to be securities. It says, but federal statutes passed in the 1930s deputize ordinary investors to help the SEC do its job by giving buyers of unregistered uh, securities the right to sue the seller for their money back. But they have to determine whether or not it is something that even qualifies in the first place because we have not yet qualified cryptocurrency or and we can't because there's so much shit coin out there that we just don't know what to do. Well, we don't, but the SEC are going to figure it out and then that's going to have an impact, most likely a negative impact uh, on your uh, your crypto. So <clears throat> what I think is probably happening is... Um, well, I don't know if it's the biggest rug pull in history. I think it kind of might be. Uh, if Coinbase ends up getting too much flack for all of for all of these, you know, registered securities, you gotta you gotta, you get your whether your HDIC or whatever it's called, two hundred fifty thousand, whatever it's called, all these like things you have to go through in order to be essentially a bank in the U.S. Um, I see, he's definitely not gonna figure it out. Yeah, they might. They might not. Uh, you know, they might they might just you know pull out. I mean, there's 1.2 billion dollars of company shares have been sold, so who knows what their plans are in the future? Um, but you know, <laughs> uh, like I said, rot rot with fraud, theft, all kinds of stuff. As a matter of fact, there's actually been some theft that has impacted a well loved. Um, uh, celebrity in the uh, in the games industry specifically in the uh the mass effect uh franchise uh, uh history or whatever <laughs> you know a certain amount of secure cash and banks critical yeah, yeah yeah so um so seth green seth green got his wallet hacked i know you guys feel for the guy Right? NFTs, man. Oh, your NFTs got stolen. He said, well, friends, have to me. He got fish and had an NFT, four NFTs stolen. Please don't buy or trade these while I work out to resolve. So, Seth Green had a handful of, of his uh, profile picture NFTs stolen because his wallet got hacked. Very secure. Um, oh, right click, right click, save. Uh, one of them, one of them actually uh, is a a main character in an animated series that they had teased is going to be released soon let me go ahead and uh not jennifer hale Bleh. yeah i'll pop this open here so you can see it so this is a live action mixed with animation obviously roger rabbit slash uh, chip and dale style uh I, this is i don't know if this music is, is copyrighted but um it's voice and everything sean green's voicing that ape that's his ape that's his ape okay so in this whatever the show is supposed to be i don't know what there's like it looks like it's gonna be like cheers or something i have no idea so yeah i don't know maybe a dmc that's why i turn the music down also, like this, I feel like this is playing at like a baseball stadium uh, in Minnesota, uh, and there's nobody there. Oh, Minnesota Vikings! Oh, it's a football stadium. So the Minnesota Vikings stadium, there's nobody there. So they probably rented it out to play it there to make it look like it was something that was, uh, you know, being played at a big field or something like that. Whoa! Looks like a season one cancellation. It looks bad. 
it looks bad. It looks, it, there's nothing funny. I watched this whole trailer and I was just like, there wasn't a damn thing funny about it. Now, Seth Green, Seth Green, he's a good guy. Like, I don't, I don't want to say he's a, he's a bad guy. He's, I went through his feed. He's a good guy, right? He's one of the good guys for sure. He's just caught into this motherfucking NFT shit. Um, and yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that sucks. So yeah, he got his stuff stolen. And he knows who it is because in crypto, you can track the wallets and the purchasers and you can figure out who, who things, who people are, whatever. Uh, now, I don't know if he got the exact uh, Twitter account, but he did find the Twitter account for Darkwing84. Darkwing um, and he is pleading. He is pleading. He says, looks like you bought my stolen ape. Hit me up so we can fix it. Uh, and he's, he's pleading to him as, as best he can to, uh, to try to get it back. Here's the article that was tweeted out looking forward to this one here, looking forward to precedent setting debates and IP ownership and exploitation. Having spent 18 years studying copyright and the industry laws. Uh, I'd rather meet dark wing 84 to make a deal versus in court. We can prove the promise of ape community. So now he's, he is, you know, in a way he's threatening uh, legal action against dark wing 84, um, for the purchase of the, uh, of the ape. And so I went to Darkwing Ada 4's um, uh, Twitter feed here, and he doesn't tweet very often. It was March 12th, 2021. Uh, and then that's pretty much it. Like, it, it doesn't really tweet very often. Um, and I went, I noticed that this particular one had 128 responses, and I knew what I would find when I went in there. It was 13 there. So I was like, okay, this guy doesn't have enough followers to have 128 responses so i went and i dug in here and these responses are great so first it says here it says hey frank can we chat dm me please so seth green is actually adding him directly trying to figure out how to get his shit back uh and everybody else is like keep that ape from seth green you've earned it keep the ape this is the funniest thing i've ever heard uh <laughs> seth i got it back uh it says do not return the ape please it's too funny do not sell that ape keep the ape whatever you do keep the ape keep the ape <laughs> bro you bought seth green's ape <laughs> Uh, bro, can we chat? You bought news of my dad. Um, <laughs> hold! Everybody's telling him to not to not sell the ape, and in some cases, people are telling him, uh, like, please don't sell the ape because then we're gonna get the stupid show. <laughs> like, you're helping us not have to not have to deal with that fucking show. Uh, so everybody's begging him to keep keep it from Seth Green. And like I said, Seth Green is a good guy. Like, he's a, he's definitely a good guy, but. Um, but you know, even, even, even some, even some of the best folks out there are somehow tied up in NFT bullshittery. Uh, so my guy, uh, can we, can we get that to go to court and live streamed as well? Just for the court to not give a shit and cause it all to burn. Why is it always apes? Is this a kind of meta commentary on the NFT bros? Apes is the, uh, apes are pretty much like the known mainstream profile picture community. Uh, they're the pioneers of it, right? They're the biggest ones. And so they're known, they're known by a lot of people to own an ape is supposed to be a big, th a big deal. Uh, is this new to the, the new two to the moon? <laughs> Don't sell the ape. Um, sell for big money and then let the stupid show fail. Sounds win-win. Yeah. Yeah. It's always apes because that's the same intelligence of the owners. Oh, Timmy. Hot damn. Hot damn. That's a good one. <laughs> uh so so seth green hopefully seth green gets his uh gets his eight back uh, plenty of people have already retrieved it for him but he's not really interested in those ones i think he wants a specific copy of that jpeg back uh so we'll see hopefully he gets it back hopefully hopefully he does not get it back because i don't want that show but i do appreciate everything else that seth green does he's a hero to me i love him i love him. he's best um sounds a good one demi dang so uh, speaking of NFTs, uh, GameStop, who is uh, known to be getting into getting involved in things in the last possible seconds, well after time of death has been announced for cryptocurrency, as we've already said, NFTs, cryptocurrency is pretty much in the dirt. Let me see. Yep. <laughs> Just uh, check those numbers really quick. Um, so uh, GameStop has finally thrown its hat into the arena. I told you guys when we first started talking about NFTs, I was like, I, I was like, I think I was doing like uh, Twitter spaces and I was getting involved and like trying to figure out what all of these, uh, what this industry is about and you know, all that. I was trying to really take a genuine approach to learning more about it and everything. And one thing I noticed after following a whole bunch of people on uh, who were involved in NFTs, not necessarily crypto, but NFTs, was that they always are, they always begin and end their day with either a GM for good morning or GN for good night. And I thought it was a strange thing. Like, it's not strange for somebody to tweet that, but whenever you follow a bunch of people that are part of the same community, meta community, or whatever it is, 
um, and they all start doing the same thing. It feels a little culty. And so um, he was in a great episode of uh, Love, Death, Robots. Oh, nice, nice. You last year I was always doing some Twitter spaces. Yeah, t- <laughs> Twitter spaces is that, that a voice, is the voice Twitter, basically. I was in there, and that's where all the NFT bros hang out, and they, they jerk each other off about how, you know, they're going to go to the moon and everything. They're like, yeah, boy, we're going to go to the moon, we're going to go to the moon. And the other person's like, yeah, we're going to go to the moon, we're going to go to the moon. Yeah, let's keep going. Uh, yeah. And then nothing ever happens. Uh, and so uh, GameStop has launched their own NFT brand or NFT um, wallets. And I saw this tweet and I was like, oh no. This happened on May 19th, well after the peak of NFTs, which was like earlier this year. Super surprised GameStop are so late to the party. Can't wait for them to release Zombie Survival Game next year. Thank you. Thank you, Paseo. Thank you. That's exactly it. Uh, do not drink the Kool Aid if you're offered it. <laughs> nah, man, we're going to space. We're going to the moon. It's the only way. <laughs> Even after Square sold their secondary IPs. I know. Yeah, we talked about that last week, last episode. Reggie just hitting his rep. Oh, man. Already is. Oh, hurting. Oh, just hurting his rep. So, yeah, this is. Uh, so, this GameStop NFT. Uh, this was. This started like not even that long ago. Uh, it says the home of GameStop blockchain. GameStop employees never ask for receiver recovery phrases. Right. And so it seems, according to their feed, it seems like they are more uh, in line with trying to educate and then indoctrinate, right? So it's like they start with, you know, uh, what is a wallet, right? Uh, yeah, Jerry Reddy's not part of GameStop. We can still blame him for some stuff for fun. Uh, so wallets are where your crypto journey begins. They allow you to store and manage cryptocurrencies and other digital assets and to interact with decentralized applications. They're also your identity on chain. So they have their own their own chain, uh, their own wallet. You can sign it for a, a for your Google wallet. Sorry, not your Google wallet, your uh, GameStop wallet here. You download the app and then you can buy some NFTs if you want or whatever using Loop Ring, I guess. Um, so this is a beta, beta launch. Please use responsibly and do not add more funds than you are comfortable with. That's like a legal thing right there. <laughs> That's definitely a legal thing right there. Uh, but what I'll say though is looking at this, it's getting a lot of interactions and everything, which is a little bit um, like this many interactions on something that again is so late to the game and s- like I mean NFTs are not they're not hype right now. I, I don't know who is retweeting these things, who's liking all this stuff. It's a lot. It's, it seems like excess interaction. I don't know if they're like I don't know if they're buying retweets or whatever. I don't know about that shit. I know there's a lot of bots that will see NFT or some kind of keyword or something in a, a tweet and they'll like it or retweet it. I have a couple of bots that uh, whenever I mention this kind of stuff, they'll always like like it, retweet it. And these are like verified accounts. It's totally a script. They're verified accounts and they're doing this. So maybe that's helping them get some kind of traction or something. But it just seems a little unrealistic to have so much interaction on something that is so dead. Uh, and it says right here, all right, you got, I want to say dead. Because I know someone's going to be like, well, it's not dead. But no, it's pretty fucking dead compared to what it was like six months ago. So all right, you've got a GameStop wallet now. Hopefully it's covered the basic function, sending Ethereum. It is an Ethereum wallet. Uh, crypto NFTs need to have everyone's parents on them, so that would, so uh, it means everyone has to move to the next thing. It'll happen. Mm-hmm. Ah. And so, yeah, this is uh, this is their walkthrough. They're showing how the how the wallet works. Um, they have the they have the hash up here. I don't think that really is a big deal, but you never know. <laughs> but what I noticed about this, I was like, this is for a company like, and maybe I'm wrong. But for a company like GameStop, I feel like they should have somebody involved who knows that it probably isn't a good look if you're filming a a tutorial video uh, using a vertical application, but recording in horizontal portrait mode or a landscape mode, and then posting it to an app where most people use their phones. So uh, that right there, like this, this video, I was like, who the fuck, what budget do they have? Like, this feels like the most low budget shit I've ever seen. Um, But yeah, they're going hard, man. If you want some GameStop NFTs, can't do anything with it in stores. As a matter of fact, they even said in a reply, they said that they don't, that none of their employees are trained uh, on anything in regards to, uh, to this program. So it's like. I get it. There's a lot of employees. That's a lot of training. It's a lot of money. 
But if you're going to get involved with something, I feel like you got to take some kind of commitment steps, right? Like make it so that we can use these things in the store somehow. Scan a QR code like I do at Starbucks every day. Uh, it's got to be some way to put that in. So I believe it's tied in with GME stock buying happened last year. And there seemed to be more stocks being bought than existed. Not kept kept up with it, though. Oh, I, yeah, I did kink. Yeah, they short. There was a lot. There's a huge amount of shorts. One of the companies that she already folded or rather restructured into another company name. Um, but yeah, that was that's still going on. You're crazy enough. Like, yeah, it's still going on. There's still people holding on to that shit. And they're still well above what the actual market value should be for GameStop. So yeah, GameStop is definitely being, their stock is being held afloat uh, um, by, you know, meme stock day traders, which is fine. I think that's great. Well, I was involved in that shit too. It was awesome. NFT only discount. That's right. Mike, it's GameStop. You give him too much credit. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, I, I know that, you know, it's a small indie company and everything, but <laughs> GameStop doesn't understand commitments. They fail to pre-order commitments. Can't expect them to commit here, and that's that's why I feel like it's like I, mean, I love GameStop. I don't want any, I don't want to bash any brick and mortar store um, because every I mean it's kind of like it's kind of like it's it's kind of like going into a hospice and like just like punching some old people who are already gonna die. You right? It's just like I don't want to necessarily like kick them while they're down. Like this GameStop's is is being like I said they're being held afloat right now by meme stocks. Eventually that shit's not is gonna run out and they're gonna end up folding or doing something else. So. Don't go running into hospices and punching old people. Come on, guys. You don't got to do all that stuff. Um, you can trade your games that will give you, yeah, 0 0.002 ETH, which is actually probably what it would be, frankly. <laughs> yeah, that's probably what. That's not too far off of what it would be. I already do that. Okay, okay. Well, my bad shit, man. Keep doing what you're doing there. You haven't been caught. You, nothing wrong. So... <laughs> So yeah, it just seems uh, it seems that they don't really have the commitment for it right now. They're kind of testing it, I guess. I guess and seeing they're getting a ton of engagement. They have fifty seven thousand followers on this, uh, but yeah, they may or may not be able to do something with this. I don't think anything's gonna happen uh, with uh, GameStop NFTs. I think it's just gonna end up just disappearing, just fizzling out. They're so weak, Mike, and they're easy. Yeah, they're easy to run away from. It's true. Yeah, man, when they're strapped into like a breath, a, a breathing apparatus or something like that, they can't go nowhere, bitch. <laughs> what was that, Ben Stiller? Was it Penn Stiller and who else is like threatening? Oh, like Happy Gilmore or something like that, threatening like the mom or some shit. You gonna go to sleep or I'm gonna put you to sleep. <laughs> There's so <laughs> uh, game shop's going to become spirit. <laughs> so just like Radio Shack. Oh man, I know. Oh man, Radio Shack. There's so many times I need like a, a, an adapter, like some specific adapter, and I have to go to fucking Amazon or Monoprice to order one fucking thing. I'd rather go to Radio Shack and buy like 10 adapters I don't need. That's the way it should be. But that was a, that's, that's a bygone era. Sag. Uh, let's see. Uh, we have. Oh, speaking of NFTs, actually, this is a pretty interesting story here. Um, this is a uh, what is the first world tab problems? Yeah. So Twitch has updated their extensions guidelines and it says this. It says extensions may not display, implement, include or interact with any non fungible token. Examples, extensions may not include offsite links or referral codes to NFT sites and may not facilitate the creation, listing, trading or redemption of NFTs. So this is a pretty big deal. This is a big deal because in the past, Twitch has been very reactive, right? Whenever something comes up, like uh, uh, skins or something like that, like uh, CSGO skins, uh, uh, CSGO lottery, um, uh, the, the gambling sites and all that, whenever that stuff has come up, it's, it's become a meta on Twitch before Twitch did anything. And in this scenario here, this is Twitch stepping in and saying, let's cut this off now by limiting the links. So that way people can have referral links to some random, you know, uh, Bitcoin.com or whatever other site, uh, they can't do that. And that's, that's, I think that's great because there's two, I get that there are legitimate uh, crypto industries out there. Crypto, sorry, I say crypto. I'm not, I don't necessarily mean to use them interchangeably, uh, but there are legitimate, you know, NFT businesses out there uh, where you can buy the thing that you want and own it ish uh but there's also way more scams so they're trying to get ahead and saying mm. uh this is probably a sign of amazon releasing an nft site soon and integrating into twitch you think so huh Ooh, i would be ah oh, man 
I would be really surprised if they block any other NFT site and then release their own NFTs. I feel like there's, I feel like that's a, that's a, that's, that's a bad thing. Like, it's, it's like if, it's, it's like if Twitch launched their own video game sales platform and then eliminated the ability to sell games or to link to game sites that sell games. I feel like that's probably what it is. Um, I see it's not because they care about us. It's because they can't make money off those links. Same as only fan stuff. <laughs> it could be, it could be, I, I, I mean, it also could just be that they just don't want to get involved with this bullshit. <laughs> uh, doc's game is double tap from this. I uh, can't have anything related to doc. You can't have anything related to NFTs. <laughs> Twitch bits, the newest crypto coin. Oh, okay, okay. So Titty's actually broke. So that's pretty good. Yeah, that's a pretty good angle. You're right. That's a pretty good angle. I, 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 th I, th I think you got a good point. That's that's possible. If they convert bits into some kind of blockchain, cryptocurrency, something like some kind of asset that you can use, uh, it's kind of non fungible accent, uh, asset that you can use. Then, hmm, this is already happening on a small scale. Otherwise, they wouldn't have had any idea to take this stance. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. But it's not. But the thing is, like, what my point was that before they were reactive because they would wait for it to become the meta and then they would do something about it. And this is them, I feel like, getting ahead of the curve. Uh, their base concept is that they're an ad. Mm, mm hmm. <laughs> this is ad bullshittery to it. And so, um, furthermore, actually, there's more here. Uh, NFT. Just say it. Uh, they also are making some changes to the way that they're, well, not official yet, but they're talking about making some changes to the way that they uh, handle bans. This is a this is a very big deal because right now when you get banned, you don't know why. You just get some, you know, some letter that says, oh, you don't do these things. And like, even if you didn't do those things, it's like, okay, well, maybe there's something in there that kind of falls into, like, I don't know, because I don't know exactly what I did. It was a 10 hour stream. And I did a million things this tower stream. Was it the one time I ate a lollipop wrong or something? You don't know. And so what they're talking about doing, and this is actually an interview that Washington Post uh, did with um, uh, uh, with uh, uh, VP of Trust and Safety, Angela Hessen. Hessian. Uh, and it says that safety is a journey, and this is a number one ask from our community. Uh, so we're looking at how we can make attach more details for people to understand, like the video itself. That's something we're definitely working on. So if you get banned, they'll send you a video and say, see, see, <laughs> that's what you were doing. Now fuck off for a week. <laughs> that's, I mean, and to me that that's, that's a, that's a big step because there's so much mystery, so much like smoke and mirrors when it comes to, it comes to bands. It's like, well, did this person get banned for doing something bad? Or are they mistaken? And every creator is going to be like, whoa, I didn't do this thing, Blizzard. Sorry. Oh, Twitch, I didn't do this thing. And meanwhile, somebody deep in the in, deep in the annals of, uh, of of live stream fails, like right at the bottom is like, oh, I was watching and they did this. And we'll just never know. So this is great. Here's a video. And then that person, if they want to gloat a little bit, they could be like, look what I did. Ah, I got banned for it. Okay, I'll see you in a week. And that's even more content for that person. So it kind of benefits everybody. Hell yeah, I can't wait for creators to be like, what the fuck, I got banned for this? Exactly. Exactly. And that's that's great, because it now it puts into perspective what we can and can't do instead of being this mystifying element of like, we don't really know what we could do, what we can't do. Karma Farm Max. This will last until the first big streamer shows the video on Reddit to the backlash. Uh, well, I feel like you do more good than harm. You help the hell's up some engagement while you're on vacation. It's true. His proof of why you're being forced into vacation, Miss Miss Top Streamer. That's right, Top Streamer. So I feel like this is a this is this is a good this is a good step. This is a step in the right direction here. Um, now, Twitch is also doing some dumb shit. <laughs> so, so I uh, oh god, can I say his name? Doctor, this is the fucking news. Doctor Disrespect is uh, who is currently banned from Twitch, um, aka he who shall not be named, uh, is holding a one hundred thousand dollar Fortnite no build competition. I think it's like a two v two or something. Um, and missed a two time. That's right, the blockbuster champion or whatever it is. So 
it turns out that Twitch is getting ahead of of of, 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 of getting ahead of the curve again. They're really getting ahead of things here. Uh, and it says that it is prohibited to use your channel to knowingly feature or advertise a suspended user. We understand that there may be instances where suspended users may appear on your stream due to circumstances beyond your control, such as through third party gaming tournaments. <laughs> <laughs> just as an example, just as an example, third party gaming tournaments, but we expect you to make a good faith effort to remove them from your broadcast, mute them or otherwise limit their interactions with your stream. A few helpful tips. Use hot shot duo drop featuring Fortnite to refer to the event. Use other names for Dr. Disrespect. Example, the two time blockbuster video game champion. Hide images, videos, and streams of Dr. Disrespect on your, uh, from your stream. Mute Dr. Disrespect in game. Be mindful of showing the tournament. Now, let me tell you this. Let me say this. I a part of me doesn't necessarily believe this is real, and it's because I haven't checked my email to see. <laughs> Twitch community. Let's see. Nope, nothing here. Okay, well, it's nothing. Nothing for me. <laughs> Kind lines. Is there not? Do I really not have something? Let me see. Mm, nope, none for me. So this just makes me want to know more about what happened between them to for all the shade. Yeah, this is like a jealous ex talking about a mutual. Did you get that banned the other day? Oh, I don't know. Did Ninja get banned? Poor guy. Wipe his face with the money. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I can't verify if this is real or not. I've seen this everywhere. I've seen this this uh, picture all over the place. Um, but I've not yet seen it from, oh, this is Jake Sucky. Who's, who's a, um, you know, he's, he's like, a a, 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 boosie or like a slasher, somebody who just basically handles a lot of news with like community and uh, Twitch streaming and everything, or just streaming community, creative community. So I don't know. I don't know if there's what the verification process is for the, some of these things, but because it seems a little strange, it could be real. If it's real, it's even that much more ridiculous, but you know, it's like for them to say, Instead of using the name Dr. Disrespect, use the two time or blockbuster video game champion. <laughs> it's, it seems so salty. Without knowing that Doc did it wrong, this feels like bullying. Exactly. Yeah, Twitch looks so bad with this, but they don't care. They don't care. Uh, you know, this 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 stream is actually happening um, right now. So if you if you're interested in seeing the hot shot duo drop featuring Fortnite, then um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. I have a couple of these. Not this specific one, but um got it from etsy actually so yeah don't uh don't mention dr disrespect's name when you're talking about him you got to use two time or blockbuster video game champion or whatever other things that they have listed there it seems so weird here's a list of approved terms you're able to use from the from the from the department of truth or whatever so, uh, yeah, Twitch has taken some precautionary measures in some places that make sense, and then really strange precautionary measures in other spaces. Bathroom creeper. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, jeez. I really wonder what the fuck he did, man. We'll never know. We will never, ever, ever know what he did. I'm sure it's probably pretty bad for him. Um,. Like I can't imagine that. I feel like if it was if it was Twitch messing up, then he would have pursued this shit to the end of the world. But or maybe he got a settlement or something. I don't know. Weird. Weird. Hmm. No one sent this to Twitch. Don't snitch on Mike. Hey, no, we're talking. We're covering the fucking news right now. All right. This is the news. We're allowed to talk about it. We're not promoting his bullshit or anything like that. <laughs> Careful calling someone two time. Take two might uh, go after you for trademark and Fred. Oh my God, I can't do anything nowadays. Uh, so uh, 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 we talked a little bit about Twitter. Elon Musk talked about buying Twitter. Uh, and we talked about how he uh, he ended up, or a part of his really well thought out plan to purchase Twitter involved not doing any due diligence. Um, with the company, not necessarily researching it the way you typically do whenever you do acquisitions. And like I said, as somebody who has been part of several acquisition processes, like I know the importance of doing that. You always want to do due diligence, which is where you go in ahead of time. You sign a bunch of NDAs and everything, right? And then you get introduced to the engineers and to the people who work at the company and you're able to ask questions. And you're able, able to gather data so that you know what you're purchasing, especially when you're paying forty four billion dollars. And granted, we talked about this. He's not necessarily paying forty four billion dollars. He's levering, leveraging his stocks, uh, his stock value and everything. And we know that his stock value ended up tanking as a result of this. And now he doesn't have the money. And now it seems like he's doing his best to try to um 
uh, to try to uh, drive down the cost of Twitter to match his depleting uh, uh, value of, of his own stock, his stock value. And so because of that, uh, Twitter shareholders have actually uh, signed up for a, they actually uh, signed up a class action lawsuit against against uh, Elon Musk. Says, I feel like he just wanted to dump money into something without actually caring about what it was, get people off his back about taxes. Maybe. Um, Musk started to seem like someone that got money out of nowhere. He doesn't actually know how to handle being rich. That's it. Yeah. I mean, he did get really rich really fast. But, you know, we got to also remember, while he is super rich, a lot of that's tied up into into the value of, you know, stock values, the market and everything. So if 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 SpaceX and all these companies he owns like went up, which is never going to happen, right? Uh, then he would lose pretty much all of his value and he would be, you know, just a pleb like the rest of us. Well, not quite. You'd be like a rich pleb. <laughs> anyway, so uh, they are, um, I got to read, actually, I want to read a, a good chunk of this article here. Let's see. Before, before, before. Yeah, here he goes. So um, I locked out for financial advice. Give it to me. That's good advice, man. So it says, before announcing his bid to buy Twitter, Musk disclosed in early April that he had bought 9% stake in the company. But the lawsuit says Musk did not disclose the this, disclose this stake within the time frame required by the Security and Exchange Commission. Uh, and the lawsuit says his eventual disclosure of the stake of the SEC was false and misleading because he used a form meant for passive investors, which Musk at the time was not because he owned so much of the stock. He should have he should have gone into this as a different from a different perspective, different as a different uh, uh, in type of investor. So it says because he had been offered a position at Twitter's board. Oh, I'm sorry. That's because of the Twitter board thing uh, position on Twitter's board and was interested in buying the company. So it says Musk benefited by more than one hundred fifty six million dollars from his failure to disclose his increased stake on time since Twitter's stock stock price could have been higher had investors known Musk was increasing his holdings, the lawsuit claims. Uh, by delaying his disclosure of his stake in Twitter, Musk engaged in market manipulation and bought Twitter stock at an artificially low price. And then we know, then we know that he went on, on Twitter and basically shit-talked Twitter. <laughs> uh and it had a negative impact on the stock. And so they're coming after him saying that he was it was a malicious thing. Like he went, he, he won. He didn't sign up to be uh, the proper kind of investor, or whatever. Yeah, going over a 4% stock limit, um, which would have driven up, up the price of the uh, of the stock had he submitted that information on time because people would have been like, oh, shit, now he's going to do something serious. They're going to buy stock. Price, price is going to go up, all that stuff. Um, but he didn't do it that way. And then he proceeded to go and talk a bunch of shit about it. And I know we've already shown some of you guys. I'm going to show you all that stuff here again. So he is, uh, um, well, at the same time that this was being floated all over the place. Uh, and by the way, Twitter shares uh, closed today, probably around 40 bucks, which is 25% below what Musk's initial offering was at 5420. And they're, they're implying that it would have absolutely been higher had he submitted that information in time. And I'm sure that Elon Musk knew. I'm sure he had a legal team or somebody to tell him how to do this kind of stuff. But you know, who knows? Maybe he's maybe just walking in there to be like, I'm going to buy this. Take it or leave it. <laughs> it's going to be difficult to prove malice, I think. It's going to be difficult to prove malice for sure. But if the action is done, then... They could still get objection speculation. Ah, all you fucking guys. <laughs> Everyone here is a goddamn lawyer now. Uh, and so at the same time that all this is happening, Elon Musk is running smokescreen and everything. And he's putting out tweets and he's saying, you know, who do you trust less? Real question. Uh, politicians are billionaires. Uh, and this is the final results. 3.4 million people voted on this. And as you can see, the uh, the winner, three quarters of the vote went towards politicians, which I think is absurd. <laughs> I think it's absurd, a little absurd. But, you know, when you're uh, when you're preaching to the choir, people who are your uh, your sycophants, then they're going to probably vote in favor of you. Know, you. Uh, that's a talk about a no win. If there's a difference, yeah, thank you. Does a <laughs> does turd A smell worse than turd B? Yeah, I really hope we figure out how to get to Mars so we can send that guy one way ticket. I appreciate a lot of what he does. I just wish he would shut the fuck up. <laughs> Not a lawyer. It's okay. You could just pretend this is the internet. You're totally fine. No one's gonna say otherwise. Uh, I voted for billionaires because billionaires are the ones that pay for their law, the laws to be made in their favor. So. Politicians I don't trust for sure, but I don't trust billionaires anymore, any more than that. So 
Anyway, so that seems like it's probably on hold. Uh, I think we said last time it's probably not going to happen. The Twitter deal, I still feel like it's probably not going to happen. It's more than likely definitely not going to happen now. Uh, he's going to try to weasel his way out of it. I don't know if he's going to pay a fine, if he's going to get uh, slammed with this case and end up paying a lot of money for it or what. But it's not going to matter. He is the richest person in the world. He is going to. He is going to. He's going to be fine. Don't worry. I know you guys are worried about Elon. He's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. If you need to call somebody, you can call me. We'll talk about it. I'll, you'll be okay. Uh, there's more. There's more. Apple. But not just Apple. Whoops. <laughs> but not just Apple. Uh, Apple, Amazon, and Disney have all been having little chats with EA. EA seems to be very interested in selling their company to someone. They see how much money that Blizzard got, and they're like, whoa, we want a piece of that. And so, further consolidation of corporations. They're going to go ahead and try to get get themselves embedded into, either embedded into, acqu acquired, bought, wholesale, whatever. They're going to try to make some money on a sale by by with the EA name. Um, and it seems like Apple's probably one of the ripest ones to take the deal. Because Apple is in a position where they just don't have a solid uh, gaming platform. They just don't have solid gaming representation at all. They have the technology, they have really interesting technology. You could play a game from your phone uh, through Apple TV uh, and have like really good low latency gameplay using AirPlay. Um, but they don't have any games. They don't have a platform for games because uh, they constantly sync uh, any games they touch. Well, they make enough money they make enough money doing it. They can they can show that they're earning. They're an earnings leader. Uh, I really don't dig the, where this is going to be honest. So it's possible because Apple has just a shit ton of money banked. They could afford to take this jump and purchase EA, acquire it, and integrate it and make it part of their platform. All the games associated with EA, which is a lot. Whoever buys EA is going to be a main player in the in the game space immediately. Just immediately. Let them merge. Easy to take down one monster versus the however many we got now. It's all the that all that sports gotcha. Um Apple Reason VR headset soon too. Might made by EA to develop VR games for the headset. Exact, yeah, yeah, true. And you know, EA has got so many game uh, game studios under their uh, under their umbrella. Um, they also have a lot of game studios in their graveyard, but we all we've already talked about those to death. So they definitely have plenty of game studios that they're going to be able to. Uh, 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 you know, pimp out in order to get a good deal. So yeah, I mean, I'm thinking that you know, out of I mean, out of the out of the group, it says uh, Apple, Amazon, and Disney. You know, I think that would probably definitely be Apple. But EA does have some some deals with Disney already, so I don't know what the, how that's gonna work with Apple and Disney. Like, are they gonna uh, have licensing issues, conflicts? It's, it's very complicated when you involve so many different IPs, so many different licensing uh, 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 deals, so many different studios. Like, this is a lot. So, and, and, you know, like there's also the whole process of onboarding and, and getting, and, and also getting this past all the regulators and everything to see if it's even something they could do. EA is a big company. They're a big, 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 big publisher studio. Uh, and Apple, you know, Apple is Apple. It's massive. And so I'm sure that they're probably going to take a, like the, the, the government's probably going to take a close look at this one as well. Um, but if they let Microsoft buy Activision Blizzard, there's really no reason for them to not to not uh, purchase, uh, not allow Apple to purchase EA. Log an EA game, please verify your identity on another Apple device. If you don't have Apple device, you can visit Apple Store. You know what? Google does that shit to me all the time. They're always like uh, uh, your know, two-factor auth authentication. They always go to some device that I haven't used in forever. <laughs> I, I need to remove it. It's my fault. But still, I'm just like. Log into your Google Note 7. I'm like, what the fuck? Like that thing, I gotta charge it up. I gotta charge it up before I can do this. Jesus. <laughs> well, Apple controls a, a monopoly store. Uh, they would have a harder time buying them. As a tiffle hat theory, Microsoft and Apple team up to buy out everything in the West to take on Tencent. Yeah, like 
it's easy to, it's easy it's 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 the devil you know right it's like it's easy to say you know oh we we shouldn't have all these game companies consolidating and everything but we also look at what's happening with Tencent. Tencent already owns so many different game studios. Embracer Group already owns so many different game studios. And we don't talk about when we Tencent's known, but Embracer Group is not. And they should be because they're huge. They own a lot of games. They're the ones that bought uh, the old uh, Idos games. They bought uh, Deus Ex and um, yeah, they stay under the radar. They're really good at staying the radar for exactly for how big they are now. Uh, and uh, uh, Tomb Raider. So it's it's there's there's already a lot of consolidation that's happening uh with uh with games and so it's it's like where do we draw the line you know where do, i don't know it's capitalism man just let them do whatever i guess ah uh, you know i still got more i still got a couple more things i want to talk about let me see let me see well first off which probably gives some props some huge props to to uh to v rising i don't know if you guys know this but one million vampires Vampire um, V Rising, Vampire Rising. V Rising is one of those games that uh, came across like, our community and a bunch of others, uh, and has just like uh, taken, like, just taken it by storm. Now, I think in this community we've kind of like plateaued a little bit. We have our, we have our own server, and I, I hopped on earlier today just to like feed my my uh, my core some blood <laughs> so that my walls don't fall down while I'm not playing. Um, but I think a lot of people just kind of cruise control. It's so good, it's addicting. You have 140 to 150 hours since release. Dang, that's excellent. That's crazy. Um, it is a super fun game. It is a really really fun game, especially if you're into. Uh, into like Diablo style of games, like, you know, gameplay, uh, but you want a little bit more like RPG, not RPG, but a little bit more like a builder uh, element to it. Progression, lots of progression, lots and lots and lots of progression. Not just vendors that sell you new things and bosses that drop new items that you have to craft them shits yourself. Um, it's really good. Not as just Elden Ring for you. Oh, well, yeah, Elden Ring is, 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 a, is this incredible game. So it's a tough one, but still, V Rising, one million players. Huge or vampires rally rather vampires vampires. Um, somebody posted a, a Reddit thread. They're talking about uh, how they wanted random events in V Rising. I thought it was a great idea. Random events like in Valheim, but not necessarily exactly like Valheim. Just like things that happened. Uh, they're even like even like a fog, like fog rolls in or something, or some kind of weather-ish effect. Um, just like they have Blood Moon, the Blood Moon event. It'd be nice if they had some other ones too. But you know, they're putting out updates. Hopefully, they don't pull a a, a, a a Valheim and disappear on us. Based on what I've seen and how the game plays, I think it'd be more interesting in the exact same game except in third person. You could zoom in all the way. Just wait for the mods. Just wait for the mods. Somebody will figure out how to make us. So you could tilt that tilt that camera down, and that's it. It's over. Once you can tilt that camera down just a little bit more, then um. And you can remember Battle Right being a fun game at first too. It was. It was. Now, that was a long time ago. <laughs> Battle Right was good. Bloodline Champions was good. A lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. They brought that same feel. It feels good. The combat feels really, really good. Uh, but they brought that here, and it feels good. And you could get. And they add. They add all the other elements that like they take time, so you get to log a lot of time in the game. Anyways, so last story of the day. My margarita is leaking. Ah, last story of the day. The public domain has recently gotten its hands on a well-known and well-loved character. <coughs> Excuse me. From our childhood. From like, not, not everyone's childhood, but from our childhood. Uh, gonna need a mega pie for this one. Oh god. <laughs> yes, this is awesome. Yeah, some of you guys are already on board. It's poo time. That's right. Winnie the Pooh horror film, Blood and Honey, gets its blood. No, sorry, Blood and Honey <laughs> gets its first images. Oh bother. <laughs> it is a. It's gonna be a slasher flick. 
Uh, they've already done. They've already wrapped filming. Uh, they have. There's some pictures here as you can see. There's this. Uh, let me, oh, you're gonna pop it open. You're gonna pop it open. There you go. Give me that full screen. Give me that full screen. Uh, so this is uh, supposed to be Piglet here. Uh, this is Winnie the Pooh back here. Uh, it looks like Hotline Miami to me. <laughs> This is not what I expected. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they're going for this dark theme. It's uh, yeah, I mean, it's 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 gonna it's gonna be, it's gonna be a wild ride. So the premise is bad shit. Let me read it here real quick. Let me go back. Let me go back. Um, and so rap production of this month, the film blah, 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 images. Do they actually have the premise here? No, no, I don't think they talked about the premise or anything. Uh, what they said though was that. Um, they're going to rush. They're going to rush their editing and try to get it out as soon as possible because they, they, they see that there's tons of hype around it right now. And so they want to be able to cash in on that. <laughs> Look at Piglet, man. <laughs> Will Piglet bring home the bacon? Let's find out. I'm big baby when it comes to horror, but this is so absurd. I want to see. I want to see this too. It's so most of our like major uh, copyrighted. Uh, characters and IPs, they typically get extended well beyond what was supposed to be the the, the limit, right? Um, oh, and Piglet, oh, and Piglet, you are so here we go. Let me grab this. Let me grab this link real quick. Uh, see, the upcoming horror. So during an interview with Friday, this is the plot. Which is It's the main villains go on a rampage. Okay, I read that part already. Christopher Robin is pulled away from them, but he's not giving them food, and it's made Pooh and Piglet's life quite difficult. I read that already. Because they have to fend for themselves so much, they've they've essentially become feral. So they've gone back to their animal roots. They're no longer tame. They're like a vicious bear and a pig who want to go around and try and find prey. <laughs> when you try to do a film like this, it's a really wacky concept. It's easy to go down a route where nothing is scary and just really ridiculous and really like stupid, he said. And he wanted to go between the two. Somewhere between really ridiculous and stupid. <laughs> Uh, here we go. So it says, I, I got to read this whole thing. This is too good. Shows the pair stalking a victim in a jacuzzi. She's having a good time. And the Pooh and Piglet appear behind her, chloroform her, take her out of the jacuzzi. And then kind of drive a car over her head. <laughs> it's scary. But there's also funny bits where there's shots of Winnie the Pooh in a car and seeing him with the little ears behind the wheel and like slowly going over to kill her, you know. <laughs> Suspension of dis disbelief. Yeah destroyed. It says right here, it says, Doctor revealed, the director revealed that other characters such as Tigger would not appear in the movie. Essentially, it's going to come down to copyright. Tigger, among others, is still in the copyright. Ho! Oh, Tigger is still in the copyright. And so it's not in the public domain. Eeyore could be in the movie, but it turns out he will simply be seeing the donkey's tombstone as his former friends ate him. Sadly, Tigger is a Disney character. Wow, how funny. How funny. Sounds less scary and more like gore porn. Mm hmm Eeyore, Eeyore is gonna be the first to be eaten. Yeah, look at that. Look at Piglet Boar. Look at him. Those those are perky. Sad meal. Aw. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're gonna be added to Dead by Daylight. This they'll mod it in. They'll mod it in. Anyway, so yeah, that's gonna be edited and put out. It's already done shooting. They just gotta get it. Just gotta throw that bitch in premiere and just go boop, 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 boop. Click a couple buttons and you're done. Send it up. You're good to go. We'll probably see a trailer for this within the next couple months, like maybe even sooner. All we have right now is images of it. I am genuinely curious to see how this movie looks in in motion. It looks silly. It looks. It looks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, there is a there is a new Fallen Order game. A uh, sequel takes place several years after the first one. Um, if you are if you are a big fan of Star Wars stuff, I recommend you go and take a look at it. If you want to hang out after the news, then we will go ahead and take a look at the trailer. I have that linked for you, Jedi Survivor. That's right. Um, I hope a random tiger has a big role. Have a good night. I got to have for mom's birthday. Hey, happy birthday to your mom. Uh, with Winnie the Pooh in public domain, expect character skins of Fortnite and other games. Yeah, we're going to see a lot more of Winnie the Pooh all over the place. And I guess also Piglet, too. Yeah, I guess he's part of that crew. He's part of that crew. Oh, man, I totally forgot to play. I have a sound recorder for the Seth Green story. Bored Apes Stolen. Totally forgot. Dang it, chat. You guys didn't remind me of the thing you didn't know about. But that's it for the news today. Folks, thank you so much. Boop, boop, boop. We'll do another one here. Thank you so much. For hanging out. The long news. It's a good one. It's a good one. Start over. Uh, yeah, you guys suck. You guys suck. 
edit and post. No, I can't do it. Can't do it now. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Chat, you guys are the best. I'll get this news edited and uploaded for y'all soon, 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 soon. Geo Cities, do a retake. It'll be fine. Start over from scratch. You guys be good. Asta, asta, asta. Here it comes. Here it comes. Okay. Bye.